people of my knowledge. Don't worry about will I be known. Let's see how much of the earth is going to know me. The earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord Yahweh. As the water cover the sea. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 9. Motto. Our motto is one God, one mind, one love, and one action. We're all for one. And, one and we want for our brothers and sisters. What we want for ourselves. What about soup? If I have a bowl of soup, you may have half of my bowl of soup. And anything else? And anything else. Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. You may be seated. Welcome to International Headquarters for the Nation of Yahweh. The Nation of Israel, the Tribe of Judah, for the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Welcome. Where we learn the value of the law, statutes, judgments, and commandments of Yahweh. Our rewards from keeping the laws our rewards from breaking the laws are taught here. Those of us that keep the laws are an example to the world in infinite number of ways. How gracious, how wonderful, how compassionate, how loving Yahweh is to those who are obedient to his will. It is here we also learn how Yahweh keeps his word in punishing the rebel, the stubborn and rebellious son. And anyone who is conscious of what's going on in the world today that's in love with Yahweh is in a hurry for Yahweh to manifest all of his power and bring in this scenario that we're enduring, enduring in the hells of North America where every evil and hateful bird resides coming to a close and an end. The only ones who want to see this world continue as it is are those who love this world. And this world is ruled by the wicked ones. To such an extent that heaven is ruled by the violent ones. So we're going right into rebels so that all of us that love Yahweh will take this in. This message is not intended for the rebel. Though the rebel hear this message. The message serves as a warning to the rebel, but it's not intended for the rebel. It's intended for those who love Yahweh and who are not only warned and accepts the warning in not being a rebel, but also the good ones to whom this message is intended will study what a rebel is and make sure that any of these characteristics found within will be expunged, will be repulsed, will be eradicated from their character, will go jump in the fire of purification themselves and turn the heat up full blast to make sure that 
All the filth and dirt of the character will rise to the top, leaving them pure, refined gold and silk. The righteous will do that on their own. And that's the purpose of this message. All the laws, statutes, judgments, and commandments of Yahweh are for the righteous. So that the righteous will know how to live. And the righteous choose to live the commands of Yahweh. The righteous are never upset about the law. They are happy about the law. The only people with a forlorn expression are those who know the laws are right but don't intend to be right. Just are not going to be right. So, what good is the law to a man that does not intend to be right? The good is for the ones who want to be good and who work to be good and who are in fact good. And it shows those who don't want to be good how beautiful it is to be good. And that doesn't help the bad one be good. It just hurts his heart to see such good things come to those that are good. And of course the purpose of the law is not simply to hurt his heart, the law is to reward the good man with goodness. And it's a torment to the evil man to see the good man blessed. And it's a joy to the good man to get his good blessing. <laughs> the stubborn and rebellious son at a point in time will not have to worry about heaven. Where it is, how long it is, when it is, nothing about it. They won't have to worry about eternity in heaven. Not the stubborn and rebellious son. Because he's going to enjoy a reward that carries great torment forever. Isn't it wonderful how powerful Yahweh is? He's able to execute his will. As I have been saying to you for some weeks now, I am here establishing our Father Yahweh's authority over his children. This does not mean that Yahweh is not already in authority. For Yahweh is in an authority over all things. Well, what do you mean, Yahweh, then Yahweh, that you're establishing Yahweh's authority over his children? It means that the children of Yahweh apparently have no knowledge of their father being Yahweh. So how can they obey the authority of their father without coming into the knowledge of their father? So the children of Yahweh having been lost from the knowledge of their father, have to have their knowledge restored to them about their father in order to obey his authority. And all of us here know the reward of not being under the authority of Yahweh as our father. 434 years of hell in North America proof enough for me and it's proof enough for all who are the children of Yahweh it's just proof enough you don't need anything else but just the history of our slavery and suffering and death and misery in America being the bottom of civilization living in the richest country on earth and being the poorest on earth is enough to tell a child of Yahweh I want out from the bottom and I'm ready to submit to your authority but before the children of Yahweh can submit to the authority of their father Yahweh what happens you must come into that knowledge 
So that's what I'm doing. And I'm letting us take a look at the character that was imposed upon us after, after our fathers turned their backs on the laws of God. It's not that our oppressor, the nation that is presently being used as the rod of correction or the rod of punishment is so powerful. No, no. Yahweh has used many nations in the past as a rod of punishment and correction when we broke the laws of Yahweh. And the present Gentile white man that enslaved us here in America, nothing more than a rod of Yahweh. Upon the backs of our people, we're having broken the laws of Yahweh. No marches can change it. You cannot overcome the white man by marching. Your boycotts can't change it. Because if you boycott the white man, you will truly starve to death. <laughs> That's how much of a curse you are under. Where? Leviticus 26, 14. You can get together and, and go to all the colleges in America and around the earth, among all the people of the earth, black, brown, red, yellow, or white. And when you get through, you will still be in your same mental slave condition that you're in right now. You cannot be educated out of your spiritual and mental slavery that you suffer from. Outside of Yahweh. You can join all the religions of the earth and be the most devout follower that has ever lived on the planet. And you still will be subservient to the authors of that religion. You won't be able to spiritualize yourself out from under it. And you won't be able to get preached into freedom, justice, or equality for your black rebellious self. And you can go and take all the skin whitener and hair straightener and and wear the dress of any culture you want to and you'll still be a nigger. Under the absolute curse and you'll be the bottom of that civilization. And though your skin look just like the others, you'll still be a nigger. And you can't migrate to no part of the planet Earth and get from under your curse. And it won't make any difference if you, are, if you go to politics and become the mayors and the governors and even the president of America or the president of any other country. You'll still always be nothing but a figurehead without any real substance or power. You can't politicize yourself out of your condition outside of Yahweh. You can't go pick up weapons. You can go get tanks and aircraft and everything else and try to fight and you'll end up killing each other. But you won't be free. You will always be under the domination of somebody. You won't be able to fight your way out from under the curse you under outside of Yahweh. And if you have suitcases of money and riding around with millions in the trunk of your car, your money will be a curse. You can't even buy your way out from the condition you are under. Outside of Yahweh. And though you drown yourself in drugs and drown yourself in cigarettes and drown yourself in alcohol, when you wake up, you'll still be a nigger. You were a nigger before you drank, and when you drank, you were a drunk nigger. And when you wake up, you'll, have a, you'll be a hangover-headed nigger. 
you won't get from under your misery. I don't care what you drug your ignorant mind with. Can't lessen your torment. Those are the penalties you suffer for disobedience. And if it doesn't make you any difference to suffer those penalties, good. Those of us that love the knowledge of our Father, Yahweh, are enjoying the heaven of a little sanctuary right now, but we know we're going to have a big sanctuary after a while. Those of us that love Yahweh, we have a natural high. And we can just talk about the word of Yahweh and talk about the law and, and just get off. And stay out there. We that love Yahweh have the thrill of a lifetime. You can see destruction all around you in the most vivid clarity. And you will be distressed until you start talking about Yahweh. And as you begin to talk about the love for Yahweh and the, the laws of Yahweh, the, the, the distress begins to go away and the anxiety begins to leave and the pain begins to be lessened and the joy begins to take over. And the next thing you know, you're on high. And the purpose of my message in bringing the, the, the knowledge of the stubborn and rebellious son is you can look out and see how miserable the world is without Yahweh. And you can even look out into this room tonight and tomorrow and any other day, past, present, or future, and anyone in this room that's in love with Yahweh, they all have the same type of countenance. Oh, yes. That there's, there's just a, a calmness about the ones that's in love with Yahweh. It's just a, there's a certain peace that resides in the countenance and within the being of the person that loves Yahweh. There's just a certain joy that exists in the lives of those that love Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. And, and, and though there's a mixture tonight, of the stubborn and rebellious spirit with the obedient spirit. The reason those of us that are obeying the will of Yahweh are rejoicing and we're clapping our hands full of joy is because we're looking past what's in this room into the room where there's nothing but the obedient one. That's why I wish you all for tonight. That day is coming. And those that love Yahweh and accept his authority have a different kind of clap from the stubborn and rebellious one. They have a different kind of smile from the stubborn and rebellious one. See, everybody's smiling, but there's two kinds of smiles in here. And what makes those of us that are obedient so happy is we're looking out saying, Woo, isn't it going to be nice when there's nothing but a building full of joyful folk, a earth full of happy people. In one location, you see, there's a unique thing about those that love Yahweh. They love to be around those that love Yahweh. Oh yes, you, you just keep seeking until you find somebody that loves Yahweh. And that's who you'll be with. And those that are miserable, seek out those that are miserable. <laughs> and that's wonderful. The miserable ones, they have misery parties.
they all sit around and and get their Heineken's and get their different kinds of drinks and 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 they have misery parties and they they begin to drink up I, I'll drink to that misery <laughs> how miserable are you are you you're that miserable I'll drink to that misery too. they drink to every, each other's misery It's beautiful to see the miserable ones get drunk in their misery, fall out in their misery, be an old, dumb, drunk, puking fool. It, nothing looks more pitiful than to see a fool drunk in his misery. Have you ever heard an old fool sing a drunk, miserable song? Try to sing. Sometimes they think they can sing. You see, heaven is not made up of people that need an artificial stimulant to feel good. That's right. Yeah. See, when, when somebody needs something outside of Yahweh to make them feel good, then they don't know Yahweh. Oh, yeah, they don't know Yahweh. Might be around, but you don't know Yahweh. See, the stubborn and rebellious son lived in the house with obedient parents. Mm -hmm. Oh, y'all didn't know that? See, the stubborn and rebellious son was around happy people. The stubborn and rebellious son was born into a happy family. Whole family was happy. Everybody was happy but him. Now, you say, well, what's peculiar about it is the reality that the stubborn and rebellious son had no problem eating from the table of his happy family that he was the opposite of. In fact, he tried to eat up all they had <laughs> to the extent that he was gluttonous. He set the stage for Yahweh establishing the law, kill a glutton. See, what does the glutton do? He tries to eat, take away from, ingest for himself all that would keep the family life sustained and in health. He wanted all the health and the wealth of the family for his gluttonous self. He, he didn't want them to have any. He wanted it all for himself. What does food do? Food sustains life. And good food sustains hell. And the stubborn and rebellious son didn't want his family that he was born into that was happy and obedient to the laws of Yahweh to have anything. So what is the stubborn and rebellious? See, the stubborn and rebellious son never left home. That's right. He never became independent. The stubborn and rebellious son are always dependent on somebody else to feed him. That made him, not only was he stubborn and rebellious and gluttonous, he was a lazy, dependent, a good for nothing. Huh? He let his family go out and work, and then he sat around and ate up everything from them. The only thing they got to eat was what they fixed and ate it right while they were there. They couldn't walk away from nothing in the house without the old stubborn and rebellious gluttonous son just tearing it all up. And then go out in the street and make the name of the family look bad. Mm -hmm. See, the stubborn and rebellious son is not content to be wicked in the house. No, 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 no. He leaves the house and go out into the street and cause a riot. Public disorder. He has no order about himself. He, he's a public miscreant. A public deviant. See, when you first start to, to do wickedness in the house after you become hardened, 
You, you can't stand staying in the house and doing it. You might start off drinking in the house, but you end up in the street because that's the nature of carnality. That's the nature of external chemicals. That's the nature of what happens to those who put their trust in other than Yahweh. And you don't bring a shame on Yahweh. You can't bring shame on your father. You bring a shame on yourself. You don't bring a reproach against Yahweh's name. You bring a reproach against yourself. Yahweh remains sovereign. My message is not to the ones that are gluttonous. My message are to those of you who were trying, who were influenced to be stubborn, rebellious, and gluttonous. But with me showing you this wisdom, you will refrain from this. On your own, you will turn from your wicked ways. You will pray and humble yourself. Seek the face of Yahweh. Huh? And turn on your own from your wicked way. And that's the only time that I'm going to hear you and bless you with the joy I have. See, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. This joy that you have, the world can't give it to you. And since the world didn't give it, the world can't take it. Praise Yahweh. This message is not strong enough for a stubborn and rebellious son to take it in turn. You hear it, and at the moment be convicted and feel the pain of the truth, but it will continue being stubborn and rebellious. Only those who incline to righteousness will hear this message in turn. There's two in the field, two on the rooftop, two in the bed. One will hear in turn, though they're both doing the same thing. And one will be left. Can't go with Yahweh because he will not turn from his evil, wicked way. That's what that means. Leviticus 26, 14 through 18. You don't want to turn, it's okay. You're going to find out why it's okay. See, if you study this law, you won't drink no alcohol, boy. You, you'll you give up Heineken. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, you will. You won't bother it, boy. You won't, you won't be trying to play no thing about, well, it's not against the law for uh, me to drink a little wine. A little wine is good for the stomach's sake. See, see, your mind tells you that kind of stuff. And every person that I've known in my life that try to use the word of Yahweh huh, as an excuse to do their wickedness are gone and they, they live a horrible, terrible suffering before they left here. This thing that was a little bit for their stomach's sake became their all-consuming passion. And the ones that did it would turn the wine bottle up laughing at everybody else. And he was in full control. See, the one thing about it, when you don't live for Yahweh, you think you're under control. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you have the idea that, oh, I, I can just drink one bottle and lay it down. I don't need to. See, the nature of that is, then you'll start drinking two and say, well, I, that's all I need. I can just drink two and let it hang. No problem. And then next thing you know, you sent back for another six pack and then, you know, I, I can drink four and it's all, everything is all right. Everything is cool, man. It's just four. <laughs> Yeah, I can handle it, right? I, 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 I can handle it. See, Yahweh is nowhere in that. That's I talking.
And then your mind tell you, it's the most deceitful above all things, is your, your mind. And so your mind began to talk to you. So you see, you cool, you stayed in, don't nobody know, right? Yes, yeah, somebody know, Yahweh know, your wife and your children know, huh? Yeah, they see your old fool self, they see you right off the front. And they get the witness you going down the road, out of here. Mm -hmm. They get to see you going. They know you're on your way out. You say, well, they, uh, do you know the power of a secret? And you, want, you want to try to use what I teach to try to get your wife. Uh, uh, do you know the power of a secret? Can you imagine trying to twist what I teach around? Everybody understand I'm talking about the stubborn and rebellious? Sir? And the gluttonous, I, I, before we read this again, I have to read, it's it just, I've had those kind around me. They, they want to eat from my table, but they don't want to help set the table. They want to eat from my table, but they don't want to prepare the food that goes on my table. They want to eat from my table, but they don't want to cook, prepare, or serve the table. They want to eat from my table, but they don't want to clean up the table after eating. And clean the dishes after eating. They just want to take from our nation. They, they want the benefits. Hmm? They want heaven, but they don't want to build heaven. And a man that does not want to build heaven does not want to sustain heaven. You know, you know what I mean by sustain? Huh? Yeah. See, the, the, the stubborn and rebellious son, he, he wants to come and enjoy these lights, but he doesn't want to pay the light bill. And doesn't want to cut the lights off. Even, he, he just come in with them on and could care less if they stay on all night. He could care less. Leave, leave that up to somebody. You care about the lights? Well, you cut them off. How many heard children talk like that? You, you want to do it? You don't like the way it looks? Do it yourself. Anybody heard, like, heard that in your life? Stubborn and rebellious. I could care less about no light bill. See, the man that cares is the man that paid the bill. He understands what it means to walk all throughout the house and cut the lights off. And when the light bill goes into his name, he begins to cut stuff off. But when the light bill is in his parents' name, he can't remember to cut nothing off. He go, he go to bed and turn the TV on and get into bed and swear He's going to cut them off, cut it off, you know, and go to sleep each night with it on. Who does that? The stubborn and rebellious son. He has no care. Who cares? The father that comes in, he sees the TV on. And see, these kind of people, not only do they leave the TV on and be laying up sleep, but the lights are on too. And they can hear the water running in the toilet and they'll never juggle the handle. As long as the parents and the father paid the bill. Hmm? The stubborn and rebellious son sees no dirt in the house. Sees nothing laying around that needs to be picked up. He never sees that the grass needs to be cut. Huh? You want to have a fight? They had one in this city last year, I think it was, that he killed his brother over cutting the grass. He didn't want to cut it. So the one that asked him to cut, he killed him. Yeah, me, you just cut the grass yourself. Kill it. <laughs> now, he's spending some few, few days in jail, but you know, that's called stubborn and rebellious, isn't it?
the stubborn and rebellious and the gluttonous son is, is sitting back watching us build the kingdom of heaven and wants all the joy that comes from it. And as we move up and become more upscale in our living, do the our sacrifice, huh? The stubborn and rebellious son is right there, usually first in line, making the first request. Usually. And they're the kind that want to skim by. If you, if you put pressure on him, he never goes beyond what he's forced to do. We'll get up out of bed late. Father's gone to work four hours ago. He'll get up four hours late go into his mama and demand breakfast and holler where is my food you haven't fixed breakfast yet I'm ready to eat y'all never you know, I've seen niggas like this see a nigga couldn't live with me like that I show him the door long time ago see when your mind went to thinking like that, the door opened. <laughs> oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. You definitely don't have to go by my rules. Out there. See, I have, I will never try to tell my kids what to do out there. I'll never, I'll never, never tell him. We'll never try to tell him what to do over in his house. I might ask him, but I won't tell him. In my house, another kind of story. I'm going to tell you what to do. I'm not going to ask you. I'm going to tell you. Oh, you don't like the rules? Glory. See, the door was open the moment you start thinking about going against my rules. I went and opened the door. That's when I opened it. You went, why the door open it? See, you got a funny thought in your head. <laughs> and I see the stubborn and rebellious look on your face. And that, that look, see, I can't stand that look. That look has to leave here. <laughs> yeah, not, 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 not after a while. Yeah, yeah, now, 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 now. <laughs> That's the only way I can be the man in my house is right now. You can't even look at me sassy. A sassy look will get you into serious trouble. Do you want to be looking bad? You better claim stomach ache or something right off the top. Look, don't take nothing personal. I got the stomach ache, Abba. Let me know your head is hurting or something right away. <laughs> See, when, I, when you hear my footsteps, you start moaning and groaning. Ooh. So I can ask what's wrong. You can tell me I hurt. Don't you let me interpret your look. A lot of folk run their house like that. Anybody heard of folk run their house like that? Yeah. Peace in the house always. Peace in those kind of houses. That's where you have peace in the house. Always. Our rewards from keeping the laws, our rewards from breaking the laws are taught here. Those of us that keep the laws are an example to the world in infinite number of ways. It is here we also learn how Yahweh keeps his word in punishing the rebel, the stubborn and rebellious son.